Hi gang, Scott Davenport here. Welcome to Impost. Thanks for joining me today. Well, today's photo is uh, from In the Field. If you saw that earlier this week, it was out in Bandon, Oregon. Had a really nice sunrise, captured a photo of some pilings. And there is a little tweak that I want to do to the sky in this photo. So let's take a look at it here. So I've done my basic processing and I brought the photo into Photo Raw. Because of the sky, now I had a longer exposure here. I can see here this is about 15 seconds. As you know, as the sun comes up and the winds start to whip up, and the whole change of temperature thing happens, I was getting too much ripple on the water. And I wanted to have you know a bit of texture. You can see it kind of out here, but somewhat smooth. So all these pilings really stood out. Now that had the effect of blurring the sky some, but uh, it, it feels like it's in no man's land. It's kind of between being crisp and textured and uh, not completely smoothed out. I wanted to change that. And the reason I wanted to bring this into Photo Raw is to leverage two things, a blur filter as well as the masking tools. So in here, I will add a blur filter. Now I want to use a radial filter because I want to add a bit of motion. Let me turn this off for a second. We've got motion going on here from really using these lines here from, from this angle kind of up here, left to right or west to east basically. So with the radial filter, I want to have that feeling of motion. The very first thing I'll do is take the center point and just drag it basically off to camera right. Sorry, camera left. Let's, let's put it way out there, okay? And now the amount is, of course, way too high, but we want to see some of that motion there. And because I placed it, and actually let's place, let's push that back up again and place this right about at the horizon there. So we're getting this upward sweep from this being the center of the radius, pushing all the way out here and getting those nice streaks there. Now I don't want to go that, that, that hard on it, right? Because... If I did that, then I'd have to start worrying about the reflections, and that becomes a very major masking job to not have the pilings blur. But really, I'm just watching the sky and just taking a little bit more of the edge off of that. So before that blur and after, again, only looking up at the sky. And that looks really nice. Now, what to do about limiting this effect is I'm going to use a luminosity mask and then a gradient mask to clean things up. So first thing, open up the masking area here. Let me get a little blue bubble going on there so you can follow my cursor a little easier. I'm going to add a luminosity mask. So why the luminosity mask? Let me add this thing on and let me view the mask. So this is the luminosity mask. Looks like a black and white photo. It's because I want all these trees in here to become very, very dark. That means it's being masked away. The blur effect will not be on the dark parts of this photo. And a luminosity mask is a quick and easy way for me to mask the effect away from the dark parts, you know, the pilings and so forth and everything there. And this looks, this looks pretty good. You can see along the tree line, there's, there's a bit of blur and a bit of mess there. We're only just getting started here. I want to put the view back on. When I work with the luminosity mask, I'm working visually and I'm paying attention to get the sky brighter, which means more blur effect, and get the tree line darker. I'm not worrying about the foreground right now. We'll clean that up in a moment. So I'll start with the level slider and just start pushing this thing around. It's not working as well as I'd hoped. The window slider is working better. So I'm getting those, this part here darker, what happens with the levels? Now I'm brightening up the sky there and keeping that tree line lower there. So just kind of nudging these things around. I want to keep it in the sky. I don't want to lose that there. What's this doing for me? Don't want to do that. That's looking even better, brightening up that sky. Okay, that's pretty good. For the most part, the sky is brighter shades of gray or almost near white. That means I'm getting that blur effect on the scene. Let me turn off that view again there. I'll toggle blur off and on. Watch the sky before and after, right? Just a touch, just enough to, to smooth it out. Back to our view mode. So looking at the mask again. I don't want any of the blur on the foreground. So gradient tool. I'll choose linear bottom. I can see my mask will be on the bottom part. Click it there. Tighten up the feather. And now I've taken care of almost everything that I need to worry about. I might even be able to get away with just rotating that. Nah, we'll keep that there and finish it off with a simple brush. Looks like I got to go back and 
re-straighten out my gradient there. I lost a little bit of my horizon line. And then we'll get a brush, paint out, and deal with just the tiny little bits here. Just masking that all away because I do not need any blur on these parts of the photo. And this honestly, I probably don't even need to worry about that too much. Let me get my opacity pushed all the way up so I'm completely removing those bits. Definitely don't want it there. Okay, like that. Don't need the blur in between the trees. Let's see, that's all cool. Turn off the view. And now the last part, perfect brush. Let's bump that up. Decrease the feather a little bit. I'm just using the bracket and shift bracket keys. I'm going to do a few individual clicks in and around the tree line. Notice that dingy gray is kind of starting to disappear. That's, you know, a little remnants of the trees being blurred into the sky. And you'll also notice that as I'm clicking and dragging, my photo is getting a little blurry itself. That's, um, it's a speed up mechanism that on one is using so my brushing is smooth uh, I have to say I'm not a huge fan of it because it makes it a little challenging to see what's actually happening with my photo um, especially when you're working with a blur but I do appreciate the speedier brushing alright so there we go and now if I do a quick before and after on that blur I'm just getting it nice touch in the sky. And so that's uh, that was kind of the key technique I used on the photo to just smooth out the sky a little bit more than I was getting with my filters, uh, but not to the point of making it so uh, drastically different from the foreground that I would need to worry about the reflection or start doing some really intricate masking. Could do that, but the reflections here, really looking at it, it's mostly just about the color, right? You know, there's these nice orangey pinks. Those are reflected down here. I don't need to have streaks of, of clouds going through the water like that. I don't think it would make sense either because the water and the sky will be moving at different paces. But just a little bit of that extra motion directional blur using, once again, the radial, it really helped out uh, finalize the photo. And so, you know, that's really the end of it. Maybe I'll do a little more retouching to remove a piling or two that are around the edges that are distracting from, uh, from you know, the, the scene overall. But I hope you found that useful. It's a technique maybe you can use on one of your photos. If you got questions about photography, drop them in the comments below. If you want to keep it private, you can send me a message through my website. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Happy shooting.